8th of uh, February slot to Flux Buddies. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is Chinese New Year's Eve, I guess. Although, um, actually, Chinese New Year takes place for probably about 15 days, um, if not an entire month. Um, so plenty of days to celebrate, but Chinese actual New Year, 19th of February, and it is the year of the goat. Um, so I thought I'd play some Chinese New Year games, similar to uh, what I did for Valentine's Day. Um, so we're going to kick things off with the God of Fortune. Uh, so use the mouse to control the man and control uh, catch the money dropped down by the god of fortune. Be careful to not run into the ghosts of poverty or you will lose money. Um, I feel a bit odd. Oh my god. Um, he's moving fast. Moving. I, I can't get any money. I can't get any money. There we go. Oh, there we go. I got one. I got one. I got one money. So, so far, Chinese New Year. Oh, there's a... Oh, I, suppose, I suppose that's a... A, um ghost of poverty. Uh, I'm not doing very well here. Um, it's quite hard to line up. He's very fast. He's, he's a very fast god. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, I guess they're ghosts of poverty. Uh, he's dropping traditional Chinese money there, the ones with the hole in the middle. That was where people could um, hold uh, like the money together on a bit of string. He's also dropping ingots there, um, which used to be a very f uh, popular form of money in older China. Um, also, one of the things you eat at Chinese New Year is um, dumplings that look like those. I think they're called Tianzi or something like that. Tianyu or so. I can't remember what the Chinese name is. I just call them dumplings. Um, but ow! They, oh, the ghost stole my money, you little jerk. I'm doing really badly at this. Um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, the dumplings sort of meant to look like ingots, so you eat them at Chinese New Year for prosperity. Uh, let's try that again, because I did appallingly then. Um, Traditionally, you're not really kind of like chasing after the god of prosperity for ingots and money. I, I'm doing so badly at this. I am so poor. Um, and yeah, you don't really have uh, ghosts of poverty pinching your money, but you do have red packets of money called Ang Bao's given out, and they're my favourite part of Chinese New Year. Well, I mean, no, obviously seeing my family is the favourite part of Chinese New Year, but yeah, Chinese people generally give out Ang Bao's for kind of uh, Chinese New Year, and also for kind of, ow, um, sort of big ceremonies like weddings, births, um, sometimes birthdays, that kind of thing, and also, um, uh, yeah, and... Uh, what it is is like it's a red packet of money and you can get some really beautiful red packets as well and um, yeah it's just meant to set you up for the new year and traditionally well at least my mum does this you should really give out new notes um, I, this is really hard um, yeah so you'll see a lot of people going to the bank around this time of year to get new notes to hang out and generally it's married couples giving it to young kids although my aunt is still not married so she has to get an ungpao from my mum and she, my mum is so like peed off that she has to still do this uh, okay so we've got one just called just called Chinese New Year and I think it's similar to the um, Valentine's monster dude um, like monster creation thing and that it has nothing to do with Chinese New Year except that we're gonna dress up this girl this anime girl <laughs> as a a, a Chinese New Year person like um, so it's a little bit better this time because uh, I guess um, we can actually see the options so I'm gonna go I'll go with that. It's a bit showy, bit bit showy there, young lady. I think you're showing a bit too much leg. The whole idea behind the Chung Sum is that it's not like kind of skimpy and you know it, it it's meant to be long and elegant with two slits up the side, so it kind of suggests you know what what you know what, what might lie beneath. That was quite similar, I guess. Uh, me, not really. Um, that's quite a traditional dress. I I'm gonna go with the red traditional red dress. Uh, hair pieces, chopsticks. Now, I hate it when people put chopsticks in their hair. It's not right. I mean, Chinese, it's not chopsticks they have, it's hairpins that they have in their hair, but the guys, they kind of look like chopsticks, but I hate it so much in this country when people go to, like, I don't know, a fancy dress party or a chinese theme party, and they put chopsticks in their hair, because it's like putting a knife and fork in your hair. And would you do that? No, you wouldn't. So don't put chopsticks in your hair. It's disgusting. It's unsanitary. And it's gross. I'm gonna go with bells in my hair. Uh, ooh, dresses. Ooh, I like that one. That is styling. That looks like the more kind of traditional um, Chinese dress. I've seen many performances with this kind of dress, and then they use like the long flowing sleeves as part of the dance. I like that one. That is very grand. Uh, eyeshadow. Ooh, I guess I don't want to put too much on. It's more about your outfit. Uh, here you go. Uh, mouth. Let's, let's have a little smile. Cheesy grin, been a bit cheeky. Uh, I think a big smile, big welcoming smile. Footwear, um, it's all rather impractical, isn't it? Uh, I mean, traditionally you probably wear like 
flat sandals like that. Handmade with the uh, uh, like embroidery of good fortune and stuff on them. Uh, I'm gonna go for these. Really, you can't really see them. They haven't thought that one through, have they? You can't see it through that. Uh, anyway, uh, footwear, skin tone, I've been through that. Accessories. Fan, a good luck fan. Chinese, ooh, money. Oh, this is um, a Fu character, which um, generally you see these on the front of people's doors at Chinese New Year. I've got one on the front of my door at the moment. And um, actually you hang it upside down um, because uh, the Chinese word for Dao uh, literally means upside down. Although actually for Cantonese people, if the Fu sign is hung upside down, Fu is also Dao when it's upside down, means poor, and it sounds like the word poor, so you're pouring your luck away, meaning bad luck for you. So Cantonese communities tend not to hang the sign upside down, but for everyone else they hang it upside down um, to invite kind of, you know, and it means blessings and happiness and, you know, to bring luck and prosperity and all that lovely stuff um, into the house. So that's what... Um, that's what that's and that's why it's upside down as well um so i don't know i get a bit weird about because i live in a very english community uh, not very many chinese people there so i get a bit worried that they think like i'm just being an idiot and just hanging it the wrong way around but no i mean to mandarins very good for new year if you hand out mandarins um it, again means good luck you know it's, it's good health and all that and because we do a lot of house visits during chinese new year um mandarins you tend to be kind of like you know, just going around with nothing but mandarins and handing out mandarins. Uh, good quality ones too, so I'm going to go with the mandarins there. Uh, backgrounds. Ooh, I quite like that one. That one's nice. Um, yeah, let's go for that that one. That one. So there we go. That's um, that's my Chinese girl celebrating Chinese New Year. And you say, Gong Si Fa Chai, which means happy Chinese New Year. Gong Si Fa Chai. And then, oh, I think Cantonese is Gong Hei Fa Choi. Um, so it's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Gong, si gong, si gong, si ni. Now we're going to go to the fortune cookie because there's something I want to educate you about that might blow your mind about fortune cookies. So let's click on it first. Click on the fortune cookie to get my. You will be awarded some great honor. Just some great honor. Now here's a little fact for you. Fortune cookies, not Chinese. Actually invented in San Francisco. Um, I can't remember what year, but in Chinatown in San Francisco, um, based on like a Chinese biscuit. Uh, it's, I think I think it was the love uh, love uh, love letter biscuit, which is kind of like a thin, crispy pancake that gets imprinted with um, kind of uh, very pretty kind of pictures and characters that you give traditionally it's like you know almost like valentine's day you give it out to the one you love um but yeah this is this is not a chinese invention it's an american invention that's why i hate them i think they taste awful um so yeah don't go thinking this is chinese it's not uh, so next up we're going to play Mooncakes. Uh, Mooncakes is not a Chinese New Year thing. It's actually in, uh, to do with the Harvest Festival. So in a, the purpose of this game is to select the mooncakes in descending order of the number of egg yolks they have. Uh, press left arrow and down arrow. Okay. Uh, okay, two. So what? Wait, no. Oh, descending order, wasn't it? So uh, down. There we go. Um, yeah, so... Mooncakes actually come from the Chinese Harvest Festival, literally called Mooncake Festival, um, and they are sort of like a really sweet um, yam-based uh, cake, pastry, very heavy, very sweet, very rich, and they'll have like a salted duck egg inside it, well you get different ones, um, but you know, you give them out at the Harvest Festival, so I'm not quite sure why we were playing a Chinese New Year game about it. Um, you may remember me kind of talking about it around uh, Harvest Festival last year. Um, but yeah, it's an autumn festival, also known as the Lantern Festival as well. So yeah, of course, Chinese New Year, there is a lot of um, food that gets eaten at Chinese New Year. Oh my God, it's one of the best things. And all of it will symbolize something, like I told you earlier about the dumplings. Um, my favorite, oh, game over, we won! We've moved on now to Mahjong. Mahjong being a tile matching game, so we're matching all these up. Another little fact for you, this again is not a Chinese invention. The game, the Chinese game of Mahjong is actually incredibly different to this. This again is, I think, an American invention um, by an American computer scientist who just basically took the tiles from Mahjong. So if you were to play actual Mahjong, um, it would, like the tiles do look like this. 
um, with the kind of seasons and dragons and winds. And then, um, so those are your special ones, like the winds. Uh, this is a dragon. This is a white dragon. This is a red dragon here. Um, and then you saw the spring and summer just there. So those are special tiles. And then you get the base tiles, almost like a pack of cards, kind of. So that's the bamboo hand. That's the circles hand. Um, oh, yeah, characters. I can't remember what the other one is. Um, but yeah, Mahjong in um, China, at least how I play it, is more like a gambling game, more like poker, um, in which that you have, you create uh, four walls. It's a four player game. Um, you create four walls with all these tiles, and then um, you have a hand, like you draw a hand of, oh, I think it's 13, 14 tiles from that. And what you're trying to do, like in poker, is basically construct the best hand that you can. and um, that's, that can be made from pairs, threes, or fours. Um, and generally, you play for point. It depends how advanced you're playing. You can play a very basic level. You can play advanced level. Um, but if you're trying to go for, like, one suite, so you'll try and, like, just have, like... Um, circles or bamboos or characters and then if you manage to get kind of fours out of the dragons and stuff like that that's extra points um so when it comes to totting up the kind of money at the end of it um that's the thing that you're going to need to pay attention to um so yeah very different to this game so it's really funny because when I, I i got my grandfather's mahjong set recently and i was saying to my friends let's play mahjong and they were like oh really and i was like no it's not it's not it's not mahjong like you think it is it's not the tile matching game it's actually a very addictive um gambling game um and certainly my auntie used to um be part of a kind of a serious uh i don't want to say gambling ring because that sounds really sinister or weird you know um serious but like she'd have regular mahjong games and they'd actually play for money and i refused to play with her because she would just bankrupt me she's so good at it because a lot of it is kind of bluffing and stuff like that and um, discarding tiles um, so every every hand you can discard a tile into the middle and then obviously if someone else needs that tile they pick it up but they have to shout like I need it you know pong if it's a four or uh, kong uh, no it's kong pong mahjong mahjong obviously if you win the game if you get I think it's three threes and a four or pairs I can't remember the exact um, the exact uh circumstances that you need and also like poker there are various different rules that you can play to um and i think i've just backed myself into a corner there so yeah mahjong this is american mahjong chinese mahjong a lot more like poker um and a lot more interesting a lot more fun and the idea is it's, it's meant to be fast paced and um yeah you kind of uh you keep it up and you keep a good pace to it so you, there's no kind of sitting around deliberating for ages um those are flowers by the way 